Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, Ambassador Jeffrey, in your testimony, you call for an advanced authorization for use of military force against Iran uh, to prepare for the possibility that they will violate an agreement that has not yet been reached. So this is the committee would, that would have to pass an advanced authorization for the use of military force against Iran. Um, we already have two authorizations for the use of military force that are open-ended, not limited by geography. And we have a third one that is pending uh, before this committee with regard to what the limitation should be for the authorization for military force by the United States against ISIS. Um, could you talk a little bit about what you think should be in that resolution? Uh, what type of military force we should be explicitly putting into that resolution? And what should be the conditions under which this committee passes an, an advanced authorization for use of military force against Iran, given the fact that we don't know uh, what the conditions will be uh, that could possibly then trigger the use of that advanced use of military force in the resolution that you would recommend? Uh, thank you, Senator. To be specific, this is something that would be part of a package if, in fact, uh, the Senate uh, did not take, uh, if we do get to an agreement, the first step, then under the uh, Iran Nuclear Review Act, you looked at the act and you didn't take action to stop the lifting of sanctions, thus the agreement would go forward. This would be uh, a measure to ensure that if we do have this agreement, it is clear to all, including the Iranians, and but also including uh, to our friends in the region, that this isn't a watershed event in our relations with Iran, it's simply a deal to get them to stop uh, moving towards nuclear, uh, capa nuclear weapons capability. So therefore, uh, if they were to try to break out, and they still could do this within a year, uh, under the agreement as uh, we understand it, that current U.S. policy laid out by the President repeatedly is that we will use military force to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, given recent events, including the Syrian debacle, it would be helpful if we knew that the U.S. people through the U.S. Congress supported that action. Can I, can, may I just ask, just so I understand, you want us, you want this committee to authorize the use of military force against Iran explicitly in the event that they violate the agreement or, or in the event that there is no agreement? In the event, with or without an agreement, that Iran is on the verge of getting a nuclear weapon, and the, this administration or no other administration has ever said what that red line would be, that's another issue, but certainly it is U.S. policy that we would use all uh, means at our disposal, there's euphemisms, but it's clear it means military force to stop Iran from actually achieving a military capability. As that is our policy, but as there's some question to our willingness, given the Syrian experience, to carry out that red line policy, it would be helpful if the U.S. Congress were to do that. In particular, well, again, the balance it of reason. Necessary, it was not necessary to carry out the red line policy because Assad acceded to what it was that, uh, in fact, um, the goal of um, the administration was, which was to put their chemical weapons under. So, in fact, we did not have to go beyond the red line because uh, Assad accepted the conditions. So I guess, again, and I'm trying to just zero in here in terms of what you're asking for. Uh, it, 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 is it that um, we should be having this debate now or should we have this debate after the administration concludes the deal with the Iranians? After it concludes the deal with the Iranians, the other thing with the Syrian thing is, Senator and if the let me just understand, and if the deal is one that is acceptable to the United States and to Iran, should we still pass an advanced authorization for the use of military force against Iran? Uh, yes, I think so, because uh, there's many people who think that even with a deal, uh, you're going to have an Iran that uh, either will cheat or will try to uh, get around it. What do you think of that idea, uh, Ambassador uh, Indek, that even after we reach an yeah. agreement, then this body would pass an advanced authorization for the use of military force against Iran? 
Um, it strikes me as a kind of belt and suspenders uh, approach. We don't, we don't need it. Uh, I'm, I'm wary about it partly because it, in a sense, puts uh, the Iranian uh, finger on our trigger. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure that, that, that that's a wise uh, path to go down. I think the president's uh, statement that he's willing to use all means necessary to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon is clear. Um, we have deployed significant forces in the Gulf uh, and taken measures with our Gulf allies uh, to ensure that the Iranians understand that there is a real capability there. Uh, so if we're trying to get at the question of, of will to actually use that, I think that, that there are other ways that can be done without, in, in effect, uh, producing a kind of automaticity to how we would uh, respond. Well, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I, think that, um, I think that obviously the goal of an agreement with Iran is to move towards a normalization of relations with Iran. Now, is that possible? And we don't know that at this point. But if there is going to be some attempt that is made towards a rapprochement between the Arab and Iranian uh, governments, uh, then surely it's based upon an agreement that doesn't then lead to an automaticity of, of, of uh, action that is already pre-approved um, um, uh, by this committee in terms of, of, of use of military against Iran if there's some questionable activity, questions that are raised with regard to compliance with the agreement. So, so I, I just disagree with you, uh, Ambassador Jeffrey. I just think that that would be a dangerous statement for us to be making uh, at a point at which we have reached an agreement that is acceptable to the P5 plus one uh, and that is going to, I, I think, actually lead to a a sigh of relief across the planet, uh, and that this would be an unnecessary escalation in terms of the dynamic that would have potentially have been created between our country and Iran. Senator, one word on this. Uh, I understand your point. Nonetheless, it is the policy of the U.S. government that we would do this. That is announced repeatedly by the president at almost every opportunity when he does talk about uh, the Iranian uh, situation. Secondly, uh, the deal with Syria, the willingness of the Russians to try to negotiate a deal, I believe happened only after this committee passed a resolution authorizing the use of force by the U.S. government against Syria. Uh, I, would, I, would say, I would say again, sir, that, that uh, while it is the kind of the sada voce policy of our country that Iran would not be allowed to have a nuclear weapon, the premise of the treaty will be that they are not going to get a, 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 a weapon because there will be a full scope safeguards that are in place that will give us the tripwire that we need to know to then have us act as though they're not in compliance or that they will not be in compliance and that we're authorizing military force, I think would complicate dramatically our ability uh, to in fact gain the full benefits uh, of the treaty that we're hoping uh, can be negotiated. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman.